This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Night that was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary, auto theft. The boss is Captain Green. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. A burglary had been committed at the Letterman Furniture Company over the weekend. It had not been discovered until this morning. $1,900 was reported missing. 7.45 a.m. We rolled on it. Edwards, 1215. What do you got here? Took the call at 735. The secretary, Mrs. Maskell. That's her over there. She opened the office about 10 minutes earlier. She's the first one in every morning. Says she's been with the company 14 years. All right, go ahead. She keeps the company books in the safe. She noticed right away it had been broken into. Man who owns the place, name's Letterman. Have you talked with him? Yes, sir. He claims the money was in there when he locked it up Friday afternoon. $1,900. Whoever did it sure made a mess out of the office. Really proud of the place, even turned the card file inside out. Might have been looking for the combination. How many people know it? Just the two, Letterman and Mrs. Maskell. Where they got it written down? I don't know. Why would they need to? They unlock it several times a day. A lot of people keep their safes on Daycom, Edwards. One dial turn opens it. Just in case they forget the combination, they sometimes have it written on a card, on the side of a drawer, under a desk, someplace like that. Well, I could see the place was torn up, but I didn't think that's what he might be looking for. It's known as burglary made easy. <laughs> Sounds sloppy to me. Suppose he went through all the trouble of breaking into a place and then couldn't find the combination. Then he has to work, pal. Drill job. Neat. Looks like he's a pro. He only drilled two holes. Snake eyes. He's no plumber, is he? We instructed Officer Edwards to remain at the scene to ensure evidence preservation. Then we called the office and requested a print man and a safe expert. 8.30 a.m., we examined the point of entry. The Letterman Furniture Company was located adjacent to an off-ramp of the Harbor Freeway. The burglar broke a window by the freeway and made his way through the warehouse to the office. There was no way of determining the hour or the day the burglary had occurred. 8.40 a.m., we conferred with Sergeant Ed Lavold of our department, one of the leading safe experts in the country. This is a firebox, Joe. Quarter-inch steel body, four inches of fire clay, combination lock, C-rate safe. It's fine for protecting records from a fire. Trouble is, this is requested to protect money from a burglar. Not too tough to crack, huh, Ed? You can punch them, peel them, or burn them. Whoever pulled this showed little class. Use an electric drill. Now, this is the first hole. Entered here and knocked back the locking bolt. That releases the three locking bars. Why the second hole, Ed? A Brayman type safe has a relocking device. Most modern boxes do. Now, when the back plate was knocked off, it released a spring. That set off the relocking device. So he drills here, knocks back the relock, turns the handle, and he's in. He has to know exactly where to drill, doesn't he? Well, there's the maker's name Barkley Safe Company. So you know the locking bolt is here. The relocking device here. If he was an amateur, he would have punched, peeled, or chopped. Is M.O. going to give us anything, do you think? Should be able to give us some good suspects. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to turn any prints. No, not on this guy. He knows his craft. Your best hope is somebody eyeballed him coming in. Well, we don't know when that could have been, Ed. Any case, you ought to talk to the boss about his next safe. What kind should he go for, Ed? An E-rate. One-inch steel body, inch and a half steel in the door, and it's drill-proof. Right. You shouldn't have too much trouble selling him. Excuse me, Sarge. Got a little problem out here. Where's that, Edwards? Parking lot. It's pretty small, only room for about a dozen cars. A couple of the spaces are assigned to visitors, customers, salesmen, you know? Yeah. The rest are assigned employees. Who's got the problem? A man named Claxton, upholsterer. Says there's a car parked in his space. I didn't think it was a good idea to try and move it. Yeah. Could be the burglar's car. Cold. Could have been here all night. It's a key in the ignition. Only one way it could belong to the burglar. Wouldn't start for him. What's it say on that registration slip? 
Gerald R. Walton, Canoga Park. That's a good 20 miles from here, Joe. That could be a stolen car. I'll run a make on it kind of far out, though. How do you mean? Pretty careless for a pro. King size mistake. Yeah, well, if they didn't make them, we'd never collar them. Daryl Walton had no record. There were no wants or warrants out on him. His car had not been reported stolen. 9.30 a.m., we drove out to his address, an apartment building in Canoga Park. Yeah? You Daryl Walton? Yeah. Police officers. Police officers. That's right, I'd like to talk to you. That's right, I'd like to talk to you. I wonder if we could do it inside. Any place you like. This is my home, sir, and welcome to it, sir. Steady, steady. That's all right, you can keep that. I have a whole full percolator in the kitchen. You just finish it. I guess you think I'm a little drunky, huh? Well, now it kind of looks that way, doesn't it? You're absolutely right, sir. I just got home from a little party. How did you get here, Mr. Walton? Huh? I say, how did you get home? Oh, not very well, sir. You see, I had too much to drink last night. When you drink, I don't drive. So I call a taxi. Where's your car? This is not in the garage? No, sir, it's not. It's not parked in front? No, sir. Then I give up. I must have left it someplace. You don't remember where? I'm gonna have to think about that. Walton, come on now, wake up. Where's my coffee? All gone. That's okay, there's a full carpolator in the kitchen. Oh, I gotta get straightened up. I have to be at the office at nine o'clock. I have a job of work to do. Tell me about this party last night. What party? The one you went to last night. I went bowling last night. It was the league tournament. Thank you, sir. It was after the tournament that the little party got started. I met a girl there. A really a nice lady. Yeah. She was with a girlfriend, and I asked if I could see her home. She said, are you sure you want to? That should have been the tip off. But I say, sure, I'm sure. Then I'm stuck, sure. How's that? Well, I got to drive her home at 11 o'clock at night, and she lives in Long Beach. Long Beach. Yeah. That's 30 miles from here. You drove this girl to Long Beach at 11 o'clock last night, is that it? 30 dirty miles. And you just got back. Well, there was a little stopover at her apartment. She had a bottle. When did you leave? As soon as the bottle was empty. Don't you have any idea what time it was? Late, officer. Late and cold, and the fog was coming in, and I was 30 dirty miles from home. I remember being on the freeway, and there was traffic even at that hour. I kept missing him, but not by much. Shoo. Shoo. So I got off till things straightened out a little. You follow my meaning? Yeah, I guess so. Man, in that part of town, the fog comes looking for you. I woke up so cold, I think I'm already dead. I can't even move, and my car's not going anywhere either. One start. What did you do? I left it there. What else could I do? It was daylight, and I got to be to work at 9 o'clock. Where did you catch a cab at that hour? A very nice gentleman in a diner phoned for it. Do you know the name of the diner? Oh, yeah. Harry's. Or Pete's. Or maybe it was Mabel's or something like that. Well, a cab company dispatcher will have a record of it. Thought for a minute we might have gotten a break. No, not this time. They never go down easy, do they? Well, if they do, we don't seem to draw them. Is that phone call for me? No, I guess not. Before we left Walton's apartment house, we asked the manager to look in on him to make sure he got to bed or to work, whichever seemed advisable. 10.45 a.m., the cab company dispatcher examined the trip sheets. He confirmed the fact that a fare had been delivered to Daryl Walton's address in Canoga Park. The driver, Alec Anderson, was contacted by radio. Anderson here, go ahead. Joe Friday, Burglary Auto. Anderson, we're checking on a fare you drove out to Canoga Park this morning. Some kind of beef? No, he hasn't made one. We're trying to confirm his story. Okay, what do you want to know? Where'd you pick him up? Hash House on East Slauson. Counterman called me. Go ahead. Said the guy was drunk as a skunk. Wanted to get him out before his breakfast rate started. Could he pay the meter? Yeah, I made sure of that before I took him. Long haul to Canoga Park. Okay, Anderson, anything else? Maybe. Did this guy report losing anything? No, not to us. Why, did you find something? 
Yeah, it was on the floor in the back. A fair called my attention to it. Didn't notice whether he might have had it when he got in the cab. What was it? A bowling ball. Think it might be his? We went back to the office. There was a message that Mrs. Maskell, the secretary at the Letterman Furniture Company, had phoned twice. 11.20 a.m., Bill returned the call. Hello, Mrs. Maskell. No, this is Bill Gannon. Yes, ma'am, I'm returning the call you placed to Sergeant Friday. Well, we just got back to the office and found you... Mm-hmm. What? Well, how do you know? Yes, ma'am, we'll be right out. Maybe we bought some daylight. she have anything? She thinks maybe she's got the burglar's name. Well, how'd she come up with it? She was reorganizing that card file that got dumped. Yeah. She turned up an odd one. Twelve noon, we met with Mrs. Maskell. Well, you saw the mess he made. It's taken me all morning to clean it up. Yes, ma'am. Why he felt it necessary to vandalize the office, I'll never know. Why every single card in that file was dumped out. It's going to take me the rest of the day to straighten them out properly. But I suppose that's a small price to pay. How's that, ma'am? Well, that's how I happened to find his card. Must have fallen out of his pocket and got mixed in with our cards. Well, that's why he didn't notice it, I suppose. Well, what makes you think the burglar dropped it? Well, where else could it have come from? We've never done business with anyone by the name of Arthur Tyson. Department of Employment referral card. Probably applied for a job here. No. No, he did not. If he had, I'd have remembered the name, and then there would have been a record of it in my personnel file. I've already looked. There's never been an Arthur Tyson here for any reason. Well, now, couldn't this card have gotten into the file box by accident? No, indeed. I maintain all the files here. There's no date on it. Well, there's no address, either, or you could go and arrest him. I'm sorry about that, officers. I'm only the secretary here, but I do know my job. Yes, ma'am. There's not a letter, invoice, bill of lading, or scrap of paper coming into this office that I don't personally see and record. I assure you, my files are correct and up-to-date. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Maskell. Hard to believe any burglar could be that stupid. Yes, ma'am. Still, I don't know why I say that. Ma'am? Plenty of it going around these days. One p.m., we ran Arthur Tyson through R&I. We turned up one name. The clerk pulled the package. We signed it out. According to the CII make sheet, Tyson had three priors. He had been released from San Quentin in November last year after serving three years and 11 months. For what? Are you ready for this? Burglary. Safe burglary. Well, I should have figured it. Is that right? After all, Joe, that's his bag, and he's good at it, a real artist. That he is. So proud of his work, he even signs it. If he didn't drop that card out at Letterman's, how did it get there? That's a good question, pal. Let's see if we can find the answer to that one. At 2.30 p.m., I contacted the Department of Employment, but they were unable to supply any information on Arthur Tyson. He could have been given a referral card without any record of it being issued. Meanwhile, Bill called the state parole office and talked with Robert Doan, Tyson's parole officer. Tyson hasn't reported for two months. Quit his job and changed his address. Doan's ready to violate him. Has he got a want out? No, he was going to check out one lead first. Yeah, what's that? Tyson's girlfriend, Claire Rivas, beauty operator out in West Olympic. Don't talk to her on the phone a couple of weeks ago. What'd she have to say? Well, claims she didn't know where Tyson was. Now don't think she was covering up. Well, why is that? Asked for a five-day leave from where she works. Hasn't been heard from since. of the beauty parlor where Claire Rivas was employed told us that she had requested a five-day leave of absence to visit her parents. They lived in the Imperial Valley, but the manager didn't know exactly where. She agreed to inform us if the Rivas woman returned. Thursday, March 12th, Claire Rivas returned to her job. 9.30 a.m., we drove over to the beauty parlor to talk to her. We interviewed her between appointments. Oh, he's in trouble again, isn't he? He hasn't reported to his parole officer for two months. I know that, but if that's all there was, Mr. Doan would be here, not the police. No, ma'am. Once he's been reported as having violated his parole, it's our job to pick him up. Well, I just don't understand, Artie. Maybe I'm not smart enough, but I just don't know what's wrong with him. How's that? He was doing so well when he first got out of prison. He had a good job. He was saving money. We were talking about getting married. I would have married him. I wanted to. Yes, ma'am. I suppose you think that's foolish with his record and all. But that's a side I never saw, didn't know anything about. The Artie I knew was a nice, gentle guy who never hurt a soul. Well, except for the people he stole from, I suppose. You said something about marrying him. He didn't want the responsibility. Maybe that was it. I don't know. I think the idea of having a wife to look after was too big for him. 
Anyway, he broke it off. Now, when was that? About a month ago. He didn't say why, just that he didn't think he could go that route, whatever that means. I thought he'd just need a little time to get lonesome. I waited a week, but no word. After two weeks, I was sure he wanted to call, but he was just too proud or embarrassed or something, so I called him. Yes, ma'am. He moved out of his room. His landlady didn't have a forwarding address or phone number. Artie never got any mail, so I guess it didn't matter. I don't need a brick wall to fall on me. He meant it, and it was over. I needed time to cry him out of my system, so I went home to El Centro. My folks didn't ask any questions, and you know how hot it gets down there. I guess it just dried me out. It's all over and done with now. I don't care where he is or what he's done. Well, we have to locate him, Miss Rivas. Well, you might try the keyhole. The keyhole? It's a bar over on Pico, near West Boulevard. He used to go there every night. Even when we had a date, sometimes during the evening, he'd say, let's drop into the keel for a minute. It was just like a club for him. Any other places he's known to frequent people he knows? No, I don't know of any. All right, Miss Rivas, I'm going to leave you one of our cards. If he should contact you, we'd appreciate a call. Yes, all right. Thanks for the help, Miss Rivas. Would you do me a favor? Yes, ma'am. When you find him, will you give him a message for me? I guess we could do that. Just tell him if he needs anything. Please call me. 3.30 p.m., we located the Keyhole Bar on Pico Boulevard. We talked to the owner, Fred Hinkle, about Arthur Tyson. Hello, huh? Yes, sir, this is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Okay, I just assume you didn't shine that in my customer's eyes. Are you in some kind of trouble? He might be. Serious? Could be. That's all you're gonna give me, huh? For now, yes, sir. Trouble with the law, how about that? Never would have guessed it. Such a nice, quiet young fella. It just goes to show you, I guess. Like my old man used to say, you can't tell the depth of a well by the handle on the pump. Spend quite a bit of time here, does he? He's a regular. If he misses a night, somebody's sure to mention it. Look, I know it doesn't carry any weight, but I want to tell you, Artie never caused any trouble in here. He drank a few beers, talked sports, mind his own business. Sometimes he'd bring his girlfriend in. When was the last time you saw him? Last night, just like always. I sure don't want to add to his troubles, but this is a neighborhood bar. I got a nice clientele. Men bring their wives in here because they know it's respectable. Lawbreakers, I don't need. Well, what's your point, Mr. Hinkle? Well, Artie's been spending money like it was the last day of the world. I mean, he's been partying and buying all week, and his roll never gets any smaller. What time does he usually come in? Oh, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Look, uh, do you have to pick him up in here? We try to keep it quiet. Just don't mention it to Tyson. Oh, no chance. That's one thing I never want to be. What's that? The bearer of bad news. <laughs> At 5 p.m., the night watch took over. Bill called his wife and told her he was working overtime. We had dinner, and then we went over to the Keyhole Bar, 7.15 p.m. We waited for Arthur Tyson to show. hands in plain sight on the bar. You're driving, pal. Stand real still. Never use one. He's clean. You taking me in? We'll give you your rights outside. Pick up your money, Tyson. Oh, no. I'm buying around for my friends. Oh, no. Not with this bill, you're not. What's wrong with it? The owner wants it back. Arthur Tyson waived his rights to remain silent and to have an attorney present. He claimed he had nothing to hide. He was carrying $580 in cash, 8.35 p.m. Where'd you get all the money, Tyson? Earned it. Doing what? I got a trade, learned it in the joint. I'm a wood lathe operator. Where do you work? Sarkale Industries. First class wood turning. Handles, knobs, spindles, newels, columns. If it's wood, we turn it. You haven't worked there for a month, fella. That's right, I quit. Is that illegal? Not reporting to your parole officer is. It slipped my mind, and I was sick a while. I can scratch Mr. Dome. Anything else? Oh, yeah, could be. You pulled any safe jobs lately? Not for over four years. I'm out of the business now. Is that right? How about the Letterman Furniture Company? Somebody else got that one. It's got your name on it, Arthur. What name? This one. That's yours, isn't it? it must be. They gave me one when I hit the street last year. November, I guess it was. It didn't do me any good, so I threw it away. Where'd you find it? At the Letterman Furniture Company. Oh, come on, man. Don't put me down like that. I got a little pride, you know. Maybe I wasn't any Jimmy Valentine, but nobody's that sloppy. 
All right, suppose you tell us how it got there. Why, how would I know? I haven't seen it for months. Hey, look, you didn't bust me just on account of that, did you? The card, your M.O., a roll of money you can't account for? Oh, come on, Tyson, there's only one thing open here. What's that? How many other safes you've punched? They're cute, real cute. You know I never punched a safe in my life. Always use a drill, Arthur? When I was in the business, that's the way I worked. But I quit. You got nothing to prove any different. Well, now, I'll tell you, fella, you just sit right there for a minute and try to convince yourself. I'm already convinced. I'm trying to sell you. No way, fella. We're light, Joe. Maybe. Oh, it's a good arrest, but even if the DA buys it, I don't think he'll be able to answer. We've only got two points. Yeah, I know. His record in that card, and they cancel out. Who's gonna believe a pro would make a mistake like that? We don't know it was a mistake. Then who put the card there? He did. All right, Joe, why? I don't know, just a hunch. He's had three convictions. That adds up to almost eight years in prison. People have gotten institutionalized on a lot less. Yeah, that might explain it, but he doesn't act like a man who wants to go back up. Well, if I'm right, there's one way to change his act, isn't there? Yeah. Make him think he's not gonna go back up. All right, Tyson, where's the rest of the money? Well, that's all there is. I don't know, there's more. You got more than that from Letterman's. You haven't had time to spend the rest. Now, where is it? You give it to Claire Revis? No. You know that makes her an accessory, don't you? Now, you can forget her right now. I haven't seen her for a month, and that's the truth. Could be, Joe. No, he's lying about the money. Yeah, but if he won't cooperate, I don't know how we're gonna prove it to you. Well, what do you want to do? The DA'd never go into court with the evidence we've got. No, I guess we'll have to kick him loose. Might as well be realistic. You want to pick up your stuff, Tyson? Now, just hold it up a minute. I'll make a deal with you guys. How about it? We don't make any deals. You just leave my girl. Leave Claire out of it, and I'll cop out. But she's all the way out, OK? All right, Tyson. If she's clean, she's out. OK. I did the Letterman job. But that's all, the only one. So don't try to load me down with a lot of jobs you haven't busted yet. Tell us about it. I went in through a window on the freeway side. The off-ramp covers it. Nobody could see you, even in broad daylight. I walked through to the office and looked for the combination just in case it's lying around, OK? You're doing fine. No combination. So I plugged my drill into the wall socket, and I had that box open in under five minutes. How much did you get? 1900 Why did you leave that referral card? I want to go back to the joint. First, I thought my P.O. would violate me for not reporting, but I guess he was too busy. Or maybe you just giving me a chance to check in. He's a nice guy. All right, go on. So I decided one more job, one big farewell party before you guys put the arm on me. Well, why do you want to go back to the hotel, Tyson? I just can't hack it on the outside. I don't know why it is. It's just too much. Anyway, it's spring. Well, what's that got to do with it? Baseball season coming up. I was the number one catcher on the prison team. And I think we're loaded this season. I got word there's a new pitcher coming up, Southpaw. He's supposed to throw bullets. But he's young. It's first time in the joint. He'll need somebody to steady him down. And I figure an old hand like me, I can keep him in the groove until he gets a little experience. Yeah. The best part of it is this kid's in for armed robbery, fire to life. Now, he'll do the minimum in this state before he's eligible for parole, right? Right. So, we got him signed for five years. True? True. And they're not likely to trade him either. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On April 14th, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of second degree burglary, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison for a period of from one to 15 years.